Sensitive content warning. The following material may contain content that is emotionally disturbing or psychologically triggering. Viewer discretion is advised. Please take care when determining whether to continue. This video is meant for educational purposes only and is not intended to provide medical advice. To clarify, I'm making another episode about hair in the Watts home. My goal is to centralize information, use this episode as a reference for my previous works. I also want to highlight some of the issues at present with new and interesting evidence, which has been in no previous episode and featuring the hair care issue inside of the home. She is withholding necessities from her daughter. And more shocking is her utilizing her other child as the means of control of that reward for the oldest child. Accused of cutting her daughter's hair as a form of discipline, this is just another of her actions which breathes eyebrows. If not spark outrage, the deliberate and systematic use of hair clips to regulate a child's behavior. What the is that? It's an example of the distressing psychological manipulation 24-7 in the Watts home. This disturbing clip and yet another example of Shanann utilizing everyday necessities as instruments of control highlights the importance of recognizing subtle signs of abuse. As social media becomes an increasingly pervasive part of our daily lives, it becomes easier than ever to spot concerning behavior. But I guess for some, it becomes even easier to ignore it. Every child deserves to feel safe and protected. We have to all do our part. Denying a child basic needs or necessity as a form of control is a clear sign of abuse. These are things that we need to be vitally aware of. This is another highlight. Worrying examples of how everyday objects are used to exert power over those in weaker positions. Every child has the right to hair clips. Get out of here. Without any form of control or fear attached. The use of hair clips as a reward for a child's compliance with filming takes on an even more sinister tone. Look at that. Hey Bella, you want to see Daddy have a nose ring? No, 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 please, please, no. <laughs> Daddy has a nose ring. It's floral. <laughs> Bella, take Daddy's nose ring. No, Cece, come take that off Daddy. Go take it off Daddy. Get him, Cece. Get him, Cece. <laughs> oh, God, Lord have mercy. What are you doing? I also find it curious that in previous posts, I'll put those links to all of my other hair videos and to the video that has this post in it. But Shanann said that Bella didn't want to get her hair done in, in pigtails or just get her hair done in general, maybe, I don't know. But she said that she convinced her that if she allowed her to put her hair up again, that her hair would begin to grow. Yes, sad. She lied to her about her hair. Boom. But that, plus watching her cheer on Cece to put clips in Chris's hair, get him Cece, as Chris is winching or winching, do you winch? I don't think you're a witch. I don't even know where that came from. <laughs> 
I always have one of these while I'm recording. Okay, whatever. He was like cringing in pain. Can you cringe in pain? Yeah? Is that why they say like cringe? It's like painful. I think that works. Words and things that make sense and stuff. Okay. This makes me wonder about painful experiences through getting their hair put up from their mom or with their mom. Jeez, I can make sense to save my life. I know, notating that I wanted to talk about this actually says rough hair decorating. So my notes or my English aren't getting any better during this episode, Avi. But anywho, crucial to remember that missing hair can be a sign of child abuse. When a child's hair is missing, it can indicate that the child's been physically or emotionally abused. Hair pulling, cutting, shaving can be used as a form of punishment or control, leaving a child with visible and lasting signs of trauma. I noticed that Bella's hair is quite sparse, not only in the wagon video, which is noticeably sad, and in one of my previous episodes, which I will link in the description, because again, all of the hair videos are going to be linked here, but in the pantry video, in the sunlight, through the window, it kind of highlights how thin her hair was in that one. Check it out. Let me know what you think. Come on. Out. Come on. Come on. So I've always been curious about whether haircuts were influenced by Shanann's salon or the remnants of a desire to be a beautician. I was not in Arizona, but I do have a picture of her doing what she did best, helping others while cutting my son's hair. The thank you. I remember this day so well. This was the day that Bella got her big girl bed. I called Shannon about Thrive and she mentioned she was going to rent a truck to bring Bella's bed home. I immediately told her we could do it. She asked me how and I got to share the news we finally got a truck, as this was on a vision board my husband made. I told her I need to get my kids and husband's hair cut really fast and we would be on our way. She told me no need to spend money on that she would happily cut their hair, so that we could save money. This picture I will treasure forever. Additionally, I observed that Chris had gaps in his hair, which led me to wonder if this beautician had ever whipped out the clippers. Finally, I discovered the ultimate source for answers on that question. And you already saw it in the thumbnail, let's not play around. Boom, and never in my life have I seen some shit like that. I've given a lot of haircuts with tapers, scissors, clippers, you name it. But never on the phone, bruh. <laughs> Crazy, she hella trusted Shanann. And check out Chris's haircut. So of course, apparently, the way that she put this is it was a money-saving measure. Which seems kind of odd. Because... Obviously, and again, I don't like to pick on her for the salon shit, okay? I really don't. I just find it trivial in the grand scheme of things that we can bitch about. I'm not saying you can't bitch about it. I'm not judging you. I'm not even like that. Everybody has their gripe, right? Same thing I said about the colors. Like, y'all already know I'm loud. I like the colors. <laughs> but go on ahead, you know? Like, I get it. Anyway. <laughs> Daddy, daddy? Try to get a thick part of my hair. Can I do your hair? No, honey, do daddy's. Daddy's the guinea pig today, okay? Oh my gosh, you see. Oh my gosh. Mommy, hold me. You do it. You do it. You got it. You got it, see? Just don't go through my skull. She's shaking. See a goat. All right, thank you. You're welcome. All right, you getting it? Sit down. Hello, Daddy. Jeez, please get. Sit down. Susie, I'm in a small chair so you can have better height. Stay. I'm like, I'm gonna... After you do Daddy's hair. Oh, I got it. Nice. That was a good one. That was a good clip. Susie, you don't have to put so much pressure. Me. Your Daddy. You just. There you go. Good job. I got a picture. I'm getting, I'm getting a picture. I'm getting the picture. I got the picture. No, look, look. Mommy got the picture. See daddy's hair. She wants to make sure I'm getting a picture. 
Hey, sit down. Hold on, kid. I know how this is going to be tragic. Blanky. Blanky. Is yeah. Daddy doing your hair? I'm trying to. Blanky. No, it's kind of hard to do it that way. Let Daddy do your hair. Hold the brush. Or hold the spray. Need your hair wet enough, do I? Hold the spray. This is this is epic. Alright, now I'm confused what I gotta do, right? I don't know what to Uh yeah. So CC you might I might just have to comb over your hair like this and say, hey. Oh, let me just slick it back real fast. But it's not parted. We'll go a little Val Kilmer look from Top Gun. Yeah? Let's do it. A little hair. Ready? Set? <laughs> Cece, what's Cece, Daddy I doing? I am so sorry. So, this is what happens in when I go to Dallas. You're not going to get your hair done. No, I'll brush it. All done. I'll brush it. We'll do a little... We'll do mohawks. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. Like, why the hell would this be a money saving measure while you're spending lots on nails? It just seems like she'd be doing her nails too. I've done it a lot. I do it now. I don't even go to the salon. I literally can't afford it. But at the same time, I probably pay for a lot of other stuff that I could save money on that someone could say, well, why do you buy X thing? Which is why I ain't even gonna go there with her. But in this case, it's kind of odd. It's especially odd when she bitches in public all the time about Bella long hair and then being like, yo, what's up, guys? I'm the reason she can't have long hair. You know, just need someone to talk to. Just let me know. I, can't, I don't know what to do with this hair. Hi. Hi. You your hair. I'm not saying that's my bed head I just woke up to. <laughs> Why are you getting hair clips? Because I, because I'm not sucking my thumb. You're not sucking your thumb. You're a big girl now, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Where's my secret, Chris? Where's my secret? Hey, mommy. Mommy. Come on. Yes. Daddy, what? A baby. A baby. Baby. We're having baby fever over here. Kids Two. are having baby fever. Three. Three. She's Whoa. so happy. She wants hair clips so bad. Incredible, kiddo. So anyone having um, a thumb-sucking baby? We washed her, um, we painted her nails like we normally do, and then we put our secret little um, clear nail polish over, can you guys see that? I got on Amazon like 10 bucks. Do you have CCs? Do you have CCs? Can you guys see that? I don't know if it's kind of blurry. But anyway, I'll type it in the thing. Um. Let's talk about the Mavala stop. Thumbing through her secret, her good luck charm, and getting her girls to not suck their thumbs. Something that she encouraged them to do as young infants per the baby wise regime. Because she didn't want to, and I quote, get up in the middle of the night to find that thing. She said that on her Facebook in response to someone saying, yeah, passies are easier because of this. You can remove them. You can take them away, which is true. It's not a quick fix. It's more of a behavioral thing to wean them down from a pacifier. However, her secret ingredient was denatonia benzoate, a commonly used denitrant, which is a substance added to certain products to make them unsuitable for human consumption. It's a poison. It's a chemical. Denatonium is added to products such as alcohol, antifreeze, nail polish, remover, and other sort of regular household items or cleaning items to prevent people from wanting to drink or ingest them. So it's not toxic in tiny amounts, 
but bitter enough that it's believed to be one of the most bitter substances known. Mavalastop is a popular nail polish that's marketed as a deterrent for nail biting. While the product is effective in achieving its intended purpose, it's not recommended for children or as a solution for thumb sucking. It's arguably not even usable for toddlers, that being that the only thing saying it's safe is multiple women claiming they've used it without their baby dying. So yeah, two thumbs up I guess? Or not. Now the product is actually marketed to advertise that it seeps all the way through the nail and it cannot be removed by simply removing the polish from the nail. It becomes the nail. Now the problem with toddlers in this would be that they eat finger foods and this stuff is not even removable from the thumbs. Second problem is that if they suck their thumbs at night, it's like a punishment for a crime you don't even know you committed. It's pretty sad. A lot of the horror stories that I've read online, and you know how that goes, you really typically aren't going to read the majority of the horror stories because women don't want to be chewed out by other moms. Most people are not brave enough to admit their mistakes. So you typically only tend to hear about this as a, oh yeah, use it, it worked out great for me. Instead of, don't use it, my kid woke up puking, was nauseous, I tried it and started crying because it was so terrible and here was my child waking up gagging and puking. So this stuff can obviously have allergic reactions as well as it can cause skin irritation and stomach upset. It can also cause weight loss from where the toddler can't eat finger foods because they're not coordinated enough enough to eat with utensils yet. Now with this in mind I happen to notice that Frankie was complimenting the girls by or complimenting Bella by saying look at her eating with her utensil and saying Cece was just eating right there off the table. Well actually a lot of people have asked why is Cece always just eating straight off of the table? And then it dawned on me is Lavala stopped? Did she start Celeste's anti-thumb sucking before she told people about using it because Bella actually asked her when she's in the hair clip video where is Cece's? Like 10 bucks. Do you have Cece's? And Shanann doesn't say anything. But in Shanann's defense, she does discuss tricking the girls into believing clear nail polish was Mavala stop. So I guess you could say either or. Maybe she told her she was going to put some on CC too. However, you'll also notice Shanann covertly trying to get Bella to stop sucking her thumb somewhere in two or something. And she never makes it obvious until a couple of years later, obviously in like the hair clip video, where she's very excited to announce to everyone that her daughter was excited about getting an everyday necessity like hair clips which is quite disturbing and sadistic for the nature of her wanting to post this and brag about this and mention that she knew Bella wouldn't ask for anything crazy, that she'd be excited about a sock. That's literally what that would have been like to me if my mom gave me like clips as a, as a gift. I'd be like, what the hell? That's like underwear, you know? It's like a necessity. So on top of that, there was this little mock-up where taste bud-wise, you can tell by the looks on her face, and she struggles to eat something throughout the video. And Shanann claims that it's cheese and says, oh, you don't like that cheese? Which again, in her defense, at some point, she does tell someone Bella didn't like any other type of cheese but mozzarella. Maybe this is the instance why she knows that? Hey guys, Bella, you gonna say hi to everybody? Since you took over, <laughs> since you took over, my camera went live like five times. No, no, you can't eat the whole thing. Peel this. Peel it like that, like that. Peel it. You know, waking up here, um, being two hours behind in Colorado, it's um, all my friends and family in the East Coast are already awake and going for the day, and um, it's always a blessing to wake up at 6:45 in the morning here and to see all the text messages to saying good morning, have a wonderful day, you're doing amazing, um, you're wonderful. It's always great getting those messages from your, um, your friends, your family, and people that you admire and look up to. Um, and so I wanted to say how grateful I am for all the friends and family that I have in my life that um, um, brighten my day every day by just sending me a text message or a picture or a smiley face um, or just telling me hello and saying hi. Hey Madison. Hi Bella. Bella say hi Madison. Hi Madison. Say hi to Kelly. Hi Kelly. Say hi Kimberly. Hi Kimberly. 
<laughs> say hi, Kim. Hi, Kim. You can say Kim. <laughs> so I just wanted to tell you guys how. Do you not like that cheese? I want it though. You want it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and how grateful I am to have my kids in my life and my husband and my family. Um, I can't tell you guys how much I am blessed um, every day. And so today I want to um, help somebody. So whether, you know, it doesn't necessarily need to be with Thrive. <laughs> Um, but I also want to bless somebody. And given me, it's given me a, a second, um, not necessarily a second chance, and, but a, a chance to be the best person that I can be for my family, my kids, and um, most importantly, my kids and my, myself. Um, Thrive has been the best thing that I could do for myself to better myself as a person. Um, yeah. Health wise, uh, emotionally, physically, um, it's, it's just given me my happy back, and so I want to give that back to somebody else as well. Um, miss you too, Kelly. Um, so, you guys send me a message. Anyone that's ready to jump on board and to um, have a better, healthier life, you know, um, lifestyle and a change. Please send me a message. I really, really um, mm -hmm. want to share share with everybody Hi. what I have been shared with, um, with through Lavelle. Um, so uh, shoot me a message and then we'll go from there. Hi, Christina. Say hi, Christina. Hi, Christina. <laughs> Say I miss you. Miss you too, Kelly. Say hi, Brandon. Look at the camera. Say hi, Brandon. Say hi, Tyler. Look at the camera. <laughs> so um, I'm super excited. Um, I have a lot of volunteers out there that are thriving um, and finishing up their samples. So shoot me a message, you guys, and you know, uh, share on Facebook what it's done for you in the past couple of days that you've been on it, um, and how lucky you know. What do you guys are happy about today? Um, tag me in your post um, today, guys, and I want to be there for you guys. Hey, Will. Say hi, Will. Hello. <laughs> All right, you guys. Have a wonderful day. Say have a wonderful day. Hi, day. Hi, Jason. Um, not selling anything. I'm sharing the Thrive Experience. Um, the Thrive Experience is... Um, amazing product that gives you energy, um, mental clarity, mental focus. Um, it's given me my happy back. It's allowed me to sleep better, be better mom and a wife for my family. Um, there's so many things that Thrive has done for me, but tr most of all, it's given me a blessing of um, giving me my, myself back. So um, send me a message, Jason. I'd love to talk more about it with you later. Um, Oh, Kelly, I love you. Come visit. Say, come for Christmas, Kelly. Come for Christmas, Kelly. See, Kelly, how can you say no to that face? <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, we love you. Hi, Tori. Say hi, Tori. Hi, Tori. <laughs> oh, you're so sweet. Thrive is amazing, Christina. Um, I can't. I can't. Jason, it's, it's for everybody, whether you're... Um, uh, my husband takes it, I take it, my mom and dad take it, everyone in my family is on Thrive. Um, Thrive's for everybody, it's a lifestyle change, it's not for anyone that's necessarily oh, ill, it's, it's literally life changing um, and everyone can use it. Even kids, they have 5k oh, for kids now, so. 5k oh, for kids now, so. Um, oh, my body. Okay, baby. Oh, so, um, shoot me a message, I'd love to talk more to you about it. And we'll go from there. Love you, Kelly. Love you. Love you, Kelly. Look at the camera. Love you, Kelly. Look at the camera. 
All right, see you guys okay. soon. Say bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Say have a great day. Have a good day. Blow kisses? Can you blow them kisses? Mm -mm. Blow them kisses? No. No, can they see your costume-like outfit? Show it. It's Supergirl, right? Super. Alright guys, we're gonna go wake up Cece, she's in her morning nap, and then um, I'm gonna go play with my kiddos. Have a blessed day, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye! Anyways, Bella tries really hard to eat this food that she doesn't seem to be liking, which makes her seem hungry to me. But my kids are really finicky eaters. Maybe that's why I think that, because my kids wouldn't try that hard to eat something they didn't like. But there's also the fact that my kids were fed regularly and not on a schedule and not per baby wise also. So there's also that, I guess. Anyway, let me know what you think. I'm not sure. You really do? Let me see that. A so, baby. You, well, a baby sister would is what would happen. Our fish hooks. What are you doing? What's wrong? I'm not. No. But furthermore, Shanann talks a lot about it being broken at nighttime as well. She says often, or at least a couple times, let me not exaggerate, um, she said a few times, like, yeah, it's broken at nighttime too. How the hell would you know? A, her kid should have autonomy by this point and not be being on the video camera. But video camera included, autonomy excluded. I don't understand why you would know she didn't do it at night unless you were putting it on her thumb, specifically at night, which there are plenty of websites warning you not to do but she says it worked out like a total charm a magic charm finally don't use this on your toddlers if you have any other options okay and use it very sparingly and very carefully and make sure that they're eating enough and follow all the proper guidelines that you would have to do if you are using this and especially don't use it for babies okay that's all i have boom the summary of that chapter <laughs> Soft features and colorful clothing, innocent expressions. In the hands of an adult, however, or under certain circumstances, it's then that we realize the eerie duality that dolls can have with their unblinking eyes, haunting silence, uncanny resemblance to human beings. It can be creepy as hell. The duality of a doll's nature is a part of what makes them fascinating and complex. Hair makes a girl look beautiful. Beautiful Chrissy has beautiful hair that grows. This is beautiful Chrissy, the doll with beautiful hair that grows right down to her toes. Woo! Turn the knob and her hair is shorter. Press her tummy and you can make her hair grow and grow and grow right down to her toes. You'll love to brush it and brush it. She has beautiful hair. She has beautiful eyes. She has beautiful clothes. Beautiful Chrissy comes in this beautiful dress. But you can get all these other beautiful clothes for her, too. 
and style her hair to go with them. Beautiful Chrissy has beautiful hair that grows. Beautiful Chrissy. She's ideal. Here's the thing. Hair that grows, hair that goes to here, to there, to anywhere you like. It goes. Here's new velvet. Her hair grows, just like her cousin, beautiful Chrissy. You can make Velvet's hair short, or make it grow. Hair that grows, hair that goes to here, to there, it grows. Beautiful Chrissy and new Velvet, they're ideal. Yes, the Chrissy doll. The Chrissy doll was a popular toy that was first introduced by Ideal Toy Company in 1969. One of the unique features of the Chrissy doll was growing hair, a growing hair mechanism which allowed her to have long hair. This could be shortened or lengthened by turning a knob on her back. The doll was approximately 18 inches tall, had a vinyl head and body, with rooted hair that was available in a variety of colors. Blonde, brunette, red. The growing hair feature was made possible by a retractable mechanism inside of the doll. This allowed the hair to be pulled inside of the head. So when the knob was turned one way, the hair would release to grow long, and when the knob was turned the other way, well, you know. In addition, Chrissy also came with a variety of outfits and accessories, including a growing wardrobe. It was a popular toy throughout the 60s and 70s. The growing up Chrissy doll was even more popular than the original. That's the doll you see Bella with. I find it questionable at best for a kid to be playing with this type of toy if they're having restrictions from growing long hair or a problem from hair pulling or any of the above. But I suppose it could be argued that the opposite could be true. The toy could be a way for her to have hair to play with. I don't know. Let me know what you think. I learn a lot from the collective here, such as these Chrissy facts, actually, because I didn't know what this doll was. And it actually questioned why she was named Chrissy. Uh-oh, Chrissy got in trouble. Like, why is this doll's name Chrissy? <laughs> and someone responded and informed me, because they're awesome, expand our knowledge further with the hive mind. So drop your comment in the comment section and let me know what you think about Bella playing with this Chrissy doll. So here Bella is with the smorgasbord of dolls. And the conclusion of this whole thing could be that we grapple with this issue is sad. Society doesn't recognize a huge portion of child abuse in America. The glaring disparities in how families are policed, too often we see this pattern, over-policing in low-income communities, suburban areas like the Watts were fellow residents in, this systematic inequality, it perpetuates the cycle of abuse. It perpetuates the cycle of poverty and marginalization. If we're going to truly eradicate child abuse, we have to confront and dismantle these structural inequalities. A huge part of that to me is people saying because the watch children were bathed, clothed, and dressed for pretty pictures is equivalent to them being protected and valued. As the saying goes, society will be judged by how it treats its weakest members. Parenting ties... They can be strong indeed. Rigid regimes are not what we need. Baby wise, a harmful fad. Aiming for control, making babies sad. Bad haircuts causing a frown. Rigid rules, breaking kids down. Beware of creepy dolls that lurk. Lifeless eyes can truly hurt. Time to say goodbye to all. Remember, be mindful and call out bad parenting when you see and let children be wild and free. Fashion dolls dressed in wild rock costumes with a real record and a posing stand for each one so she can twirl on any short spindle record player. And look, you can buy these exciting rock fashions to dress and pose them in. The new rock power. Look cute. He's so sweet. The British doll you ever meet. You're listening to Baby Laugh-A-Lot. <laughs> She's the funniest doll you've ever seen. <laughs> Just push the button and she starts to giggle. <laughs> Get Baby Laugh-A-Lot by Remco. <laughs> Can you keep a secret? Then listen to Mattel's new baby secret. Get anyone else away. She whispers just to you. And her lips really move when she talks. It's almost unbelievable. I want to tell you something. 
Baby's secret tells lots of secrets, so you never know what she'll say next. Hold me close and whisper. And she looks so real, the way her lips move like yours. I'd like to whisper in the dark. She can even pose the way you want. Get Mattel's soft and wonderful new baby secret. So you can have fun keeping secrets together. What kind? If we told, they wouldn't be secrets anymore. <laughs>